Welcome to Boiling Point, the podcast to motivate ever-evolving entrepreneurs and forward-thinking movement pioneers. Our hosts, filmmaker Greg Hemmings and executive coach Dave Vale, are turning up the heat in the world's business communities. Our interviews with entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and movement makers are raising the temperature of inspiration. Live from the hottest studio in this quadrant of the universe, here are Dave and Greg. Dave, we're Greg. back again, my friend. Yes. Dave, I, I, I made a little bit of a mistake a few minutes ago. Um, and uh, it, maybe it's not a bad mistake, but you and I have been recording uh, podcasts uh, for the last three hours and I'm getting hungry. And I made a mistake by going to SankaraCuisine.com and seeing uh, photos come up of really yummy looking food. And now I'm really hungry. <laughs> That, so, that, that's, uh, and, and you know what? I am familiar with Sankara because they've catered our, one of our events or two of our events. That's right. We, uh, we, we, we had um, the catering at our Boiling Point uh, process uh, gathering at Market Square. I've got no idea if our guests remember that or not, but I know our guests really enjoyed it. And it's, it's no secret who we've got on, uh, on the call today. We have the co-founders of Sankara Market or Sankara Cuisine uh, with, with us. We got uh, Lily and uh, Otito. Please uh, come on uh, into the boiling point and, and welcome. So good to have you both here. Yeah. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Okay. So wh which of you wants to give the, uh, the, 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 the general introduction of, uh, of Sankara? Can go for it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so essentially, uh, what Sankar is, is an online multicultural marketplace. So we're sort of a hub for everything related to culture in Atlantic Canada. Um, so our marketplace enables people who love experiencing new and world things um, like cultural food and craft and groceries to experience that, but from the comfort of their own home by ordering on our website, on our online marketplace directly from hyper local chefs in their community um, or artisans in their community. So we operate in St. John and Fredericton and Moncton and Halifax. So anyone within those communities can access unique cultural expressions by people people in their community who own those cultures via our website that uh, that my co-founder built uh, with the, the dev team. Fantastic. And uh, um, what was the initial inspiration for this? And the two of you are, are co-founders. Like I, I'd, I'd really love to hear how the two of you put your heads together to say there's a need uh, and an opportunity and the type of impact this, uh, this can make uh, in our community. You can go for it. Go ahead. Um, like Sankara. So uh, the idea of Sankara started from um, like from the farmers market. Um, like me moving to Saint John um, and realizing that there's so many options that people can have food that like at night or maybe um, like around. Um, so we started going to the farmers market on Queen Square. And uh, we started selling Cameroonian food, Nigerian food. And um, as we were selling that, we realized that other vendors there um, had a lot of challenges, like opening their food business in Canada, right? Uh, we realized that some people were just afraid that um, the, um, they were afraid of the red tapes that, oh, there's high red tapes to open your food business. And, and also some people were afraid that um, if they would open a restaurant, maybe within two years, um, it would go out of business, right? And, um, and other, people, other people were also afraid that maybe the community might not receive their food as other like Chinese food, Indian food, uh, French food and all that. So once we saw that, we started thinking, okay, like how can we make this easier for people to actually express their food to the community, express their other um, uh, crafts, uh, music and language to the community, right? And we started thinking, okay, we need to create something that can uh, bring people together, both the vendors and the customer, right? And um, our, origi our original idea was to have like um, a multicultural restaurant that would allow chefs to come and cook, like 
maybe on Monday we'll have Nigerian food. Tuesday will be Brazilian. Wednesday would be uh, Ethiopian or something like that. Um, it's like a, a mini market. So if you were to go to the uh, if you if if you were to go to the market uptown St. John, you have a Korean food at that market. You have um, Chinese food. You have uh, Italian food, right? But we were thinking of something that would be like um, um, a restaurant where different chefs can just come in and cook and and set to a community. Uh, so we ran with that idea, um, and we realized that. Um, the cost of starting that will be high, right? Um, and it's also like located at a specific location. So uh, it might be harder for us to bring that to Fredericton or to St. John or to like Mountain, Halifax, other places. So from there we thought, okay, maybe we should do like a food truck, right? Um, so we kind of explored the food truck idea of having a food truck that different vendors can come and use and just sell their food to your community. And I think back in 2016 or so, the I think the city of St. John had a restriction on food trucks in the uptown area. So we went, we spoke to the city about it and um, they didn't allow that at that time. Um, and, and there was also so some challenges like in the winter time, like running a food truck in the winter time will be challenging, right? the heating aspect of it, uh, where you have to pack it will be challenging. So, uh, so we, uh, we, we tried to explore different options and then we went to this, uh, to this uh, Invest Atlantic, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's a conference for entrepreneur. Like they do it once every year, like, um, like in Halifax, St. John, Moncton and all that. So we went there. We went there to pitch our idea that we would like to create this food hub that people can come and cook and set a community. Uh, we pitched to like uh, investors. We also pitched to different audience, and and uh, we didn't get the investment that we wanted. No one, no one wanted to invest in our idea. Um, but what we learned from there is that. Um, the other people that came to pitch the idea, they were using like um, like either an app or maybe a website to express their idea, right? Uh, we saw different ideas that people um, had and, and they were going more towards digital, right? Because we, we, um, if you have an app or a website, right? You can uh, be at anywhere at any time, right? Um, you won't be affected by the, uh, by, um, like having a fiscal location, right? Uh, whether it's winter or summertime, like it's online, right? So we came back from Moncton and uh, we sat together, we brainstormed about that. Okay, maybe we should go more towards the digital, right? If, if we went towards digital, like uh, we can bring this to other um, cities, to other provinces, and, and it can help more vendors, right? Uh, it, it would be a, it, it would be available 24/7 to any customer and to any chef, right? So we started building the website. That okay, maybe we should build a website that vendors can come and post their menus, and then uh, we can have the community to also come there and buy like affordable food. Um, so we thought about is okay, yeah. So um, maybe we should pursue this. So we started pursuing that. Um, we wrote our we wrote our we wrote our first version of the website as a prototype to see how the community how the community will receive it, and uh, it was received good, right? Uh, we have tried different offerings over the years to see which one will work for both the vendors and also for the customers, right? Uh, we have experimented different options, and uh, I, I think this year we are building another version of, of the website. And we are in incorporating the various ideas and the various things that we have learned over the years into the new website. Mm. And also, are, we are also building a mobile application too. This is uh, such you know a, what I love about the story yeah. um, is uh, you 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 guys weren't going to give up. Like it doesn't matter. Like you got like <laughs> talk about like that's like that's what I love about entrepreneurs is like you get you know you obviously have a passion for bringing um, really good food and culture to these communities. 
Um, where did that, like, where did that kind of passion and just, and it sounds like you just, you also knew there's a, a market, right? You knew there's an untapped market um, that you, you know, you could, if you can reach it, that market in a way that's not going to, you know, be massively expensive and have all the challenges you described, you know, and you, it sounds like you found a way to do that, but it's like, what, what, where did that passion and that, that confidence come from in terms of knowing, you know, there's, there, there's this, there's this untapped market and we're going to figure this out. It was, it might not be a food truck. Okay. Let's make it, you know, let's get, let's get a, you know, a restaurant. Well, we're not going to do that. This is actually, you know, and just iterating as you go. It's awesome. I'm just kind of curious where that uh, drive came from. It's like a grit and yeah. resilience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think um, uh, where some of the grit came from is our mission uh, in the company is a social mission to get people to better see and understand one another, even though they come from different backgrounds. And so in our experience, um, uh, sharing food from Otito's cultural background, which is Nigerian and Cameroonian, um, you know, uh, and eating food from there and listening to music from there and really um, getting a sense of that place, but locally using the ingredients that we have here and using what's available, um, resources and otherwise, uh, we realized that there are more people than just Tito mentioned we were vendors at a market ourselves at one point. Um, there are more people who are like us who have a cultural uh, experience to want to share and a cultural value and an input that's different from the local experience than just the two of us. So we realized that um, creating a space where people can actually showcase and be proud of and mm -hmm. create income and revenue from their culture is a really unique um, and meaningful opportunity. So I think at the end of the day, it really comes down to the fact that we have a mission, which is to build empathy around culture in our mm -hmm. community um, and have it be sustainable. Um, and so that's why we operate through a website, which has, you know, no brick and mortar impact and very little, um, overhead for vendors who want to get started in showcasing their culture, whether it's for a purely, you know, entrepreneurial pursuit to make money, or if it's for um, a pursuit to showcase their culture, for example, like Chef Tutu, who's from Ethiopia, there is no other Ethiopian, you know, food provider in the St. John area outside of Chef Tutu. So she's like maintaining and holding up the integrity of her entire culture and her country in one woman and one being to showcase that to her community. So for us is really powerful to be able to use this website and mission as a vehicle for providing people a little look at least into um, an intimacy uh, literally into me see um, into that individual's life and culture and um, home aspect of of the way that they experience their culture and bringing that to their doorstep or bringing that to their catered event uh, you know in, in your case um, or bringing that to them in the form of you know a delivery of a unique Kenyan um, necklace you know that they can get at their doorstep from our website so it's really that uh, cultural expression and sharing that we're interested in. Um, one thing I was curious about um, was uh, the kitchen side. But, you know, you're just saying some of the the barriers of entry are, you know, the red tape, the health uh, inspections, all the stuff. Um, do, is there a centralized kitchen that uh, a lot of the chefs are able to use, or is is, is it up up to them to figure that side out? And you're just the selling aggregate. Um, so, um, like, well, we've we been trying. So we, we um, like originally we had that as a challenge, right? Um, uh, like how, like it was a challenge in, in the sense that um, like if a chef receives one order, right? And they have to rent the kitchen to cook for that one order, it's expensive for them. Even though they have to respect the order and honor the order. Um, so we started thinking, okay, uh, we want to reduce this barrier for the shelves, right? So the way that we have been doing it is that um, if we want to expand, for example, in Halifax, right? We have already expanded there. What we will do is that we start looking at um, what kitchens are available, right? So like every every city has a every city has a YMCA, right? They have a YMCA. They have um, a high school that has a kitchen. A YMCA that has a kitchen. They have. Um, different locations that will have like a licensed kitchen, right? So we would reach out 
to those licensed kitchen and just go like into a partnership with them that, hey, like we would like to bring chefs here. Could you guys give us like um, a deal, uh, reduce the rate or something like that? And then once we have that in that city, we will start to reach out to the vendors that, hey, like we have this uh, kitchen that you guys can rent at an affordable rate in order to cook for your community. Mm. Um, yeah, so that was a challenge that we faced. We also explored the option of having chefs license their own kitchen at home. Ah, uh, yes. If they were able to, uh, if they were able to meet the standard. See, what, and, and I see that as an incredible service that you guys have as coaches, if you will, on helping <clears throat> these chefs figure out that. Like, how do you get your own personal kitchen license? And it's probably not that difficult, but it's another barrier. And it feels like your business is about taking barriers down. Uh, exactly. For the good of everybody, you know, like, uh, and that's why it's a social enterprise, I suppose. It's a, a, for, a for-profit business that has a social mission. And uh, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. And, and it's also good. Um, like what is actually great with what we do is that um, if we can, if we can, if we can just figure out one thing, right. Is that we have already figured it out for everyone, right? So people don't have to go through it again, right? If we have a licensed kitchen, then everyone can use a licensed kitchen, right? You don't have to go around again to find a licensed kitchen. And and to just add to what Lily said before, so one of our drive to in Sankara is that we like to create, right? Whether it's um, building website, building an operation that allows vendors to to um, to cook and sell, um, like um, like when we create stuff and we see people use it, like when we create an opportunity for a Chinese chef to to prepare a meal for the mayor of Moncton to eat for their meeting, right? When we see that happen, right, it's like uh, it gives us great deal of happiness that we, we can link these two people together, uh, and we have had. I think we have had it in St. John, Fredericton, and other places. Yeah, we've been really fortunate. We've catered for every level of government. So, you know, municipal, provincial, and federal. So we're um, trying to get people um, the recognition that they deserve also, right? So there's a certain amount of, um, you know, prestigious or, you know, people in certain positions that might not ever interact with, um, say, like Chef... Um, Holly, you know, may, might be an Indian vendor. Maybe they're never going to interact with the mayor because they don't run in the same spaces or they don't have access to the same network, which is a conversation you and I have had before, Greg, too. Um, so Sankar kind of levels the playing field. Um, and as long as, you know, we all maintain a good reputation and we have, um, we do honor like the orders that we receive on the website and the chefs start getting a good reputation, then everyone wins at the end of the day. So yeah, like Tito said, any amount of work that we have done and, uh, uh, answers we have to problems that we've encountered, everyone benefits from all of those solutions. So it's really been a great process. It's been humbling and it's been um, excruciatingly exciting and frightening at the same time. Um, but it's an opportunity that we couldn't be more excited to uh, expand to other cities. Um, so we're, we're operating in Halifax now and we're considering how also to get some of these uh, cultural aspects into rural areas. Um, so that's part of our one of our next pursuits also. Also, you know, you know, uh, when Greg and I were talking before you guys got on and um, just about your model and Greg was going to give me a little bit of insight and in a weird way, it's, it's very similar. I have a coaching business um, to, and, and we have a roster of coaches and these are amazing, amazing certified executive coaches. Some of, some of who just, you know, they're, they're, they, they want, they like to, they're, pra they're practitioners. They like to deliver coaching all of the stuff that, that you guys are helping, you know, like someone cook and, and just, and, 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 you know, share their art, like be a practitioner is so important because there's so much energy goes into finding the client exactly. and you talked about the red tape. And I just, I just vented to Greg for a while about how hard I've been trying to work with the federal government and small business. And I'm just like, uh, you know, but, but the coaches don't have to worry about that. And that's our deal. That's our understanding. And I, and I feel like I can shine light on them. And I feel like you guys are doing the same thing and it is really rewarding. You know, like when you hear a connection being made, you know, like I've known, you know, when someone will come up and say, Oh, so, so such and such a coach was, you know, was life-changing for me or whatever. And I know I had, you had a small piece of that. It's really, 
It feels yeah. really good, doesn't it? It feels good, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, so congratulations. Um, and I just and the other thing is, I just I, I mean it is, and you know this. I'm just repeating what Greg's already said, but I mean just so important because there are so many. Once once you've been in business for a while, you, you I, at least I forget some of the barriers to entry. You know what I mean? And yeah. and then and then when someone reminds you of you, like, oh yeah, I had to figure that out. That was really painful. Like that yeah. was. Yeah. I remember, like, what? Why do I got to fill that form out? And and then you know you're not at a place. You know, as you as you as you expand and grow, you, you can you can pay people to do that stuff, right? You know, and you can find someone who's really good at doing you know working with CRA or whatever the thing is. You take that all away from people. Do you, what are what are the maybe we could talk about it? Like, what are some of the barriers for for your your artists? Like, what are some stuff that, you know, I'd love to be educated to understand like what, you know, I, you know, I, I now, now we know how we can find them with, with, with your, your site, but I'm just curious, like, what are, what are people up against that our listeners probably wouldn't maybe understand? I really appreciate you um, asking that question uh, and especially, you know, highlighting it in the way that you did. And I do see the similarities definitely between your okay. model and how you're, um, you're almost able to like grandfather the, uh, people who coaches under you to assist them to get the opportunities that they want. And yeah. I think some of the barriers that we um, notice and that have experience, we've experienced intimately um, relate to things that are like psychosocial. So some cultural barriers around, you know, how to do business in Canada, how to get the right permits, how to get the right licensing, um, certain things related to just how things are done. Um, actually maybe something you might not think about is timing, like the timing of when this or that order should be prepared. Um, so a lot of those things, you know, our website and the rigidity, not the rigidity, but the structure and the process that we're able to predefine with the vendors that we so select to come and work on, um, in Sankara. And we have the privilege to work with as well. Um, it kind of provides that structure and stability. Um, but then there are also things that might be more invisible barriers, like, um, certain prejudices that at least working through a platform like Sankara, you don't necessarily have to face intimately um, uh, because we're sort of the um, boundary between you and, and your customer, or we are sort of a, a nest to, to catch you in mm -hmm. so that you don't have to experience those. But do you, are there any other barriers that you can think of? Yeah, I think um, like right now we have issues with like the delivery, for example, right? Like, um, like, every location that we expand to, right? We have challenges with the delivery company. So what we try to do as much as possible is um, it, um, like when we move to a new community, we try as much as possible to use the assets of that community. Right. So we use people from that community to, to cook for the community. Uh, we use the produce from that community to cook for the community. We also use the delivery of that community to deliver food for that community, right? Um, but the major challenge with the delivery company, almost like I would say close to 100% of all delivery companies that we have worked with, um, because, because the volume that we are bringing to them is, um, is, is small and not consistent. Sometimes it goes high and sometimes it's small. So um, uh, like we cannot really command their action that much, right? So sometimes they might come late to the delivery, right? And we have to explain this to the customers that are this or that. Um, and sometimes they are not professional, right? We want to maintain um, a cultural experience from the website all the way to the food landing to the customer, right? We want to maintain um, that what you're ordering is something that someone cooked for you, right? Uh, we have had experiences where uh, we would have a delivery driver that just dresses like um, anyhow. We like they didn't care so much about the food that they were delivering, and um, and um, like we would have um, an event maybe uh, to a corporation, and the delivery driver bringing the food to that corporation would just be like. Uh, we'd be out of touch with the experience that we're trying to deliver to that mm, corporation, right? Yeah, um, and we cannot really, really enforce like how they should command their drivers, how they should, like we try to tell them what they can do, but they are just a separate business, right? Um, if we had our drivers, maybe we could enforce that, but we don't 
want to create something new in every community. We try to just use what the community has, but it's been challenging working with, um, I would say every delivery company that we have worked so far has been challenging. Um, another form of challenge that we also meet um, is from the vendor side, right? Um, like uh, as a startup, um, as a small startup um, in a field that um, is kind of new, right? It's not something that people have done so many times. Um, so we, are, uh, we kind of have to create a template for us, uh, uh, both for the vendor side and also for our customer side. And from the vendor side, because the orders coming in is not consistent. Sometimes it's, it's small, sometimes it's like 100, right? And, um, and our chefs, I, I, I would say almost all of our chefs have other daytime jobs, right? So um, when we bring them those high volume orders, they sometimes um, find it hard to, uh, to honor the orders, right? Uh, sometimes they have to move things around and, and, and sometimes too, uh, we can overwhelm them with orders to a point where we have had people actually say they don't want to cook because mm. um, it's entering into their personal life. They have to leave their family and go to the kitchen and cook. Um, so we would like to have like um, a consistent order going to the shelf uh, to a point where they can leave their full-time job and actually start doing some kind of like that. Mm. Um, so we have had that from the vendor side, um, unique to At Atlantic Canada, right? Uh, we have had some vendors that, um, like in St. John, for example, uh, we have had some chefs that um, they have joined the website, they have used us to make money over time. Um, but maybe they have families in Toronto and they would like to eventually join their family in Toronto. So they would move, and as they move, if we don't have a location there, we will lose them as a vendor in Sankara, right? So we have had um, um, our uh, our Persian chef has moved like that. We have had um, other chefs that have moved um, out of our location that we're offering mm -hmm. uh, to other locations. Uh, so we would like to be at other locations in Canada to allow them to easily move and still mm -hmm and still continue selling on our website. I, I love that. That's like, like that, that's such a growth mindset. Uh, oh. I, I, what you're saying here. And it's really cool too, because everything that you're talking about is challenges I have with my business. And we're 16 years in, you know, uh, where we have a capacity, uh, we've got a pipeline of opportunities. And when we get to the edges of that pipeline, it's like, we're going to start disappointing customers because we're going to say yes, and we can't deliver. Yeah. Uh, so it's either time or price or something. So we're, we've been working really hard at Hemings House to, to turn the taps on and off. And yeah. that is a lifelong journey to figure out how to do that. Right. And it, it feels like some of your chefs are like, they all want a lot of good work, but they're juggling a full-time job and full -time. Exactly. And yeah. um, the other thing that just came to my mind is wouldn't it be great if as a dream is eventually when the full-time capacity starts to be built that maybe some of those family members from Toronto and Montreal and other places get attracted to here because small businesses are being built that can actually employ cousins and yeah. uncles and, you know, and, it's yeah. funny. I was thinking the same thing, Greg, like I was yeah. like, like, you know, yeah, this, let's, I can't wait till this is a destination and you guys are supporting that. Yeah. 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 And one, one, one last thing I just want to say, like, I, I love the, the challenge that you have with the delivery service because <laughs> what comes into my mind, I, I, I hear you in the fact that that's not your business line, but in a way, wouldn't it be cool if you could franchise your system and get a sister company and you don't even have to own it or anything, but like you, you, you find somebody in the transportation space that's building a Sankara transportation system where they are getting trained. They are getting customer service experience, all those things. So yes, you are using the local uh, providers, but to, to work for the Sankara transportation system, it, it's a business itself, you know? Uh, anyway, 
That's the that's my brain always thinking about other things to bog you down. And, and, and by the <laughs> way, we we're, we both also appreciate that. Like people come to me and Greg with all the great ideas of things we should do. So I've got an idea for a movie. Got a little bit here, so you know <laughs> to just keep because it's oh that's a great idea, and I'm like, where am I going to figure out that? You know what I mean? Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> yeah, like we, we have worked with a Nigerian, you know, uh, owner of a delivery company. Right now we're working with uh, an Indian, a local um, Halconian, that's my home city. And, uh, you know, in, in Moncton, we work with a delivery company there. So yeah, but it, yes, it's a matter of um, letting them know what our vision is and, you know, how it is that that can also um, bring value to their clients and how they're seen as well. So there's benefit all around. But yeah, it's definitely a whole other beast as a business. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I, I, it's as entrepreneurs, the four of us are entrepreneurs. Just ideas just keep flowing and we'll le leave off with just one more. I've got I'm just picturing <laughs> a Sankara, almost like simply for life, you know, simply for life. There's little stamps like SFL approved, you know, like other companies could pay a small fee to get Sankara approved. Like this is a Sankara approved delivery service. This is a Sankara approved Dish. marketplace, Sankara yeah. approved, whatever. Uh, because you're, the other thing I was thinking about earlier is what you're selling is trust uh, at the end of the day, because you're, it was really neat to see that you, you're the nest you're saying. And in this kind of new marketplace where, you know, we're, we're becoming a more multicultural community, there's still a distrust there. Uh, on all, all all sides, but you you are brokers of trust in what you're doing. Exactly, and uh, you're successful already because you're expanding. You're full timers, uh, and you're serving uh, all levels of government. Um, so you you're in now in a position of uh, influence. So I think there's a lot of really cool things that outside this podcast. I hope we keep on chatting because uh, you know that's what I like to do. <laughs> yeah, and well, the, mo the most important thing is how do people find you? Where do they where do they learn more about this? How do they order great food? How do they have a rich cultural experience or a product or whatever? Yeah, anyone who's looking to travel vicariously, since that's the only way we can do it these days, um, can visit us on our website, which is SankaraCuisine.com. Um, and Sankara is spelled S-A-N-K-A-R-A. -A -A. Um, or they can visit us on Instagram or Facebook at Sankara Market um, and kind of follow along um, through the behind the scenes and getting to know the vendors and the chefs and uh, learning more about culture because we're always trying to expose people. We know not everyone is able to buy in, but we hope people are able to buy into the idea of that mm. it's valuable to learn about different perspectives other than your own. Um, so we're always trying to share with people, you know, new ideas and new perspectives. So that's how they can find us and follow along if they want to order awesome. or if they want to take the journey with us. Well, and by the way, you're, 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 if you have, I don't know if you have it on, on, I'll check. I'm assuming you don't, but if you had like your number one fan, you should have a picture of Greg Hemmings because he, he just <laughs> raised what you guys do. And, and yeah, but uh, I, I need, I need to be better at, at ordering more, more food because uh, I've screwed up the order dates uh, a number of times <laughs> for, for so. family boxes. Uh, they've got this awesome deal, Dave, where like when my wife Jess is on call, and I'm working late, you know, there's, that's a perfect week or two weeks to have the Sankara boxes that are full meals delivered. But twice I, I sillyly went on Sunday to make the order. <laughs> and yeah. I, I, I emailed Lily and Lily's like, oh yeah, you gotta make that on Saturday or <laughs> Friday yeah. or whatever. So uh, we'll get there. But the other thing is when, event, when we start doing events again, like legit, like the first time I was uh, uh, exposed to your offering was at the five and dine. I don't know how many years ago that was, but you converted that to a restaurant and my wife and I went and I was like, this is incredible. And the concept was great. And uh, yeah, definitely a cheerleader from the, from the sidelines. And I, I want to be more of a consumer. So. <laughs> the idea there, um, so the idea with the five and dime is also the same idea that we have with our vision, right? So any place that we move in, we try to use whatever the place have, right? So uh, we know Jody and um, what's that guy's name? Brian. <laughs> uh, what? Sorry, Brian. 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 Yes, we know Jody and Brian, right? And uh, we were having a conversation with them, and they told us that they have a low time, like on Wednesdays, right? And we thought, okay, like how can we help them win on Wednesdays, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they have a great location uptown St. John. 
they have a great venue, you go inside there, it's brick walls and all that, right? So we thought, okay, maybe we can bring food to bring in people there to enjoy um, the cultural food and also buy their drinks, right? So it's a win-win for the venue and also for the vendor, right? And we're also using what the location already have. So we did that and um, many people came in, people liked it. Mm-hmm. And, and we want to continue with that concept of always using what people have, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, brilliant. I love it. That's awesome. Well, th- thank you uh, to the both of you. And uh, I hope we can have a continued conversation. Uh, yeah, let's, like, let's make yeah. sure we do that. If you guys are open to it, if, yeah. uh, if this wasn't too painful for you guys, I'd love to hear how things are going as you expand, you know, like, and, and thank you for exposing me personally. And Greg, I appreciate you getting, I, I've got to get on and check out these boxes. Surprise, You're going to get hungry. I'll, if you look at the website, I just want surprise my family. They'll be like, what are you doing? <laughs> the website right now is not yet optimized, but we are building a new version of it. And we, and we also have a mobile application coming up. So um, awesome. I mean, it's not the best website at this moment. It, it's okay. It, it totally yeah. get like, hey, it made my stomach rumble. Uh, that's fine. That's <laughs> that's effective. It's okay. <laughs> but I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see the app and uh, yeah. and everything else. So this is great. And next time we speak, um, let's, let's talk more about that network building piece, uh, Lily, uh, and the fact that you guys are, uh, you, you know, destroyers of, of barriers and boundaries. And uh, um, we would like, as the boiling point, to, to help uh, bring more voices into our podcast, even that yeah. can help help with that mission. So uh, let's let's keep on talking about that, too, when when we have a chance offline. For sure. Yeah. Thank you, Willalin. Merci for your time today and for bringing us uh, on your podcast. We appreciate it a lot. Awesome. Have an awesome rest of the day. And right now it's not snowing. It was the three minutes yeah, ago. I know. We're, we're good. <laughs> <In April. laughs> yeah. Take enjoy care. your day. Yeah. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah. yeah see you, Dave. Thanks for checking out this episode of Boiling Point. Remember to rate and subscribe to us on iTunes and follow us on Twitter at Boiling Point Pod. To see more from Dave Vale, check out leadershipunleashed.ca or visioncoachinginc.com. And on Twitter at Dave underscore Veil. Vale. And to catch up with Greg, visit Hemmingshouse.com and at Greg Hemmings on Twitter. Thanks for listening and remember, keep that pot boiling. <laughs>